All right. Uh, we need to now discuss exactly how you're supposed to be going about with your preparation and how exactly what material are you uh, going to require for the preparation of the exam. So uh, you have an option to do the institute material, but the problem with institute material is that it is too expensive and it becomes a very, very big challenge in order to cover the entire material and cover the entire uh, subject through that. So we are not going to be using the institute material. We are going to be working with the Schweizer material. So Schweizer will be providing you five books just the way you were studying with me in level one. You will have your five curriculum books and there are going to be two, um, what do you call it, uh, practice books. So Schweizer material is going to be used to study. Whatever is required other than apart from Schweizer, that will be covered by me. So extra, extra notes, whatever is supposed to be given, whatever is supposed to be made to write in the class or whatever is done is absolutely my headache. You don't have to worry about it. You just need to have the Schweizer books. If uh, uh, we do not provide the Schweizer books because obviously it's not ours to provide. So if you want any uh, help with respect to the bookseller and all of that, you can ping. I'll give you the number. I'll have the number provided. You can always just ping over there and you can get the details and get your material access. Um, so for studying part, you need nothing except from Schweizer material because it does not make sense for me to spend hours and hours making you write notes and do everything. So we have the material ready. We'll be referring to this book. So in order to do the classes, be it live, be it D2H, you need the Schweizer material for you, uh, with you. Other than that, there will be like, uh, say, for example, ethics, derivatives, there are a lot of extra handouts and etc. needed and a lot of extra stuff that needs to be made written in the book or maybe something needs to be more exaggerated or amplified uh, uh, proofs given or whatever is needed. Whatever is required is going to be done in the class. So other than that, whatever is needed from apart from Schweizer, we will be doing it. Uh, now, your question would be that is Schweizer going to be sufficient to crack the exam? Would I have something outside the uh, Schweizer in the Institute material? Uh, from the exam point of view, understand it is a professional exam. So you can encounter a question or two which is out of the syllabus or out of something that you have not studied from Schweizer. But 99% chances of that happening is very, very 99% that should not happen. Because the Institute gives us an LOS outline where the learning outcome statements are defined for every single chapter, every single reading and the subheadings. That is your LOS. So we know exactly what is expected to turn up in the exam. So there would be nothing that will turn out of Schweizer provided you have completed all the extra stuff that I have given. I'm not going to give you anything and everything extra. Whatever is needed will be covered for you. And whatever extra because the explanation has to be added extra. You cannot get questions directly the way they are given in Schweizer. So that part you cannot debate on. So whatever understanding, understanding there has to be no compromise and whatever extra is supposed to be done, I am doing it and you have to do that. So you cannot take that anything I've done is out of the syllabus. So whatever I'm doing, nothing is out of syllabus. You have to do everything that I'm doing. And it is just going to be marginal addition to this because preparing through the institute material becomes a challenge. So that is what you're going to refer to. Out of 120 questions, if you get a question out of the exam, please focus on the rest 119 because it is very, very difficult to actually crack the, uh, to, to, to go through the institute material. Not that it is impossible. If someone still wants to go ahead with it, go ahead. But my feedback has been that, you know, after doing a couple of subjects and people ultimately give up the Instimat and then again get back to the Schweizer material. So that is the feedback that I have received. So studying part is going to be from this. Now your way of studying is going to be very, very simple. Either you attend live students or you watch d 2 h students. You do the class. That is the first thing. You study and you practice. That is all you need to do until uh, maybe a month before, until the month before the exam date. That's exactly what you have to do. There's nothing else that you need to think about. You attend the class or you watch the class, you do the studying part and then you do the practice. It is extremely poor idea to do all the classes, just watch all the videos or just attend the classes without studying parallelly because then what is going to happen is your retention is going to be poor, your understanding is going to be poor and you'll have to spend double the time later when you get back to studying the same thing. So that is an extremely bad idea. You have to do these three things parallelly. Even with respect to practice, my advice is going to be that please practice parallelly because what happens is if you start, if you complete the entire syllabus and then you want to do the practice in, in, an, in a week or so, in, a, in two weeks, you just want to just practice and do nothing else. One, again, your error rate is going to be so high because your attention will not be so high and your understanding will not improve. Because if I'm simultaneously practicing, I'll understand that what kind of questions are coming, what in-depth of analysis is needed, what is my strike rate, is my understanding sufficient, do I need to study harder, do I need to study better, do I need to remember better, what points to remember, what points not to remember. So there are so many things that you need to understand about it. And that is what you'll understand from the practice part. So your practice has to be simultaneously done. Yes, depending on your situation, you're working or not working, you started in the month of October to study, November to study, December to study, October, November, December, you're starting to study is perfectly fine. January, February, it is okay. After February, it becomes a problem. But still, I've seen people starting in March also, they have cleared the exams. 
there are people who start in October and cleared the exam or not cleared the exam. Starting in March, cleared the exam and not cleared the exam. But understand, out of 100 people starting in October and studying very well, nicely, thoroughly, understanding things, out of 100, maybe 5 people will not clear. But those who are starting in March, say for example, out of 100 people, 40 may not clear and 60 will only be able to clear. And also there is a lot of other background needed. What is your background? Do you have a background in finance? How was your concepts and strength in level 1? What is your reading speed? What is your understanding speed? What is your intellect speed? Because a lot of questions come up that when should I start to prepare? You know, it becomes very confu uh, it, it, it becomes very subjective to answer this question. But the earlier you start, the better you study, the more you practice, the higher the probability of the success. And also you will have to evaluate how fast and how good you have been with academics and uh, anyways that is secondary and more so how much of background you have in finance and how much of it you already know or you're applying in the job and all. So that comes in later. So my suggestion would be that latest by December you start and for the ones who are appearing in level 1 in December immediately either you start or you start and jan end immediately not even wasting a single minute or single second. What I do for the live students for level 1 December batch what I do is the live students appearing in December level 1 they start coming to the level 2 classes immediately the next day of their exam. They do not enroll over here they do the classes till 25th of January uh, when the results are generally out and once the results are out then they enroll over here and continue with the batch because I don't want them to lose out on 2 months. And for the video students I of course cannot make that kind of provision because live you can come and attend but videos I cannot send it to you. Uh, you know without having you enrolled so that is something I'll not be able to do even if someone clearing level 1 exams uh, uh, appearing level 1 exams in December starts with level 2 for June 19 uh, uh, June exams and suppose he did not clear the exam what he can do is he can get his user ID blocked and he can renew it next year without any charges that is the maximum we can do for the video students for the live students even who have not attended level 1 with me come with your admit card and attend the classes so you show your December admit card you attend the classes for level 2 until January because I don't want it to get delayed but January end is the last time when you start please do not delay anymore because anyways you're registering in the month of February to for the exams so I would not suggest you to start late now depending on when you started, whether you're working or not working, how much time you have, you can alter the amount of practice that you're doing. But some amount of practice has to be done. Some amount of practice has to be done along with your studying. So it is very, very simple. You watch the class, you study, you practice. That is what you need to do for all the chapters. Now how do you exactly go about with the preparation? I'll just give you a very, very simple timeline. So the first thing is you're, in, you're watching this introduction class, you guys are attending it, the video students or YouTubers are going to be watching this class. You have to watch this to get a good thorough understanding. Do not skip a single part of the video because you know later on you understand that okay I, sh I should have started this way or I should have studied this way. So I don't want you guys to have that problem. So you are supposed to be starting with this class, attending the whole thing, understanding how to start studying. The pattern, the way of studying is important. There will be an order of study given to you which will be different for the live students and for the video students. Say for example, for the live students, I'll try to cover those subjects first where the changes are there so that I can provide it to the D2H students also. And for the video students, of course, the, the subjects where there is no change is the one that I will prioritize. I'll, I'll make them uh, uh, do that first. Um, I'll talk about the study, ch the syllabus changes also. I'll talk about that. So you have, you will be given live students have their order of study, video students have their order of study. Please stick to the order of study because I've take, I put in a lot of thought in order to make that. I try to uh, alternate practical theory, practical theory to improve your attention. Like say for example, you have to do derivatives before you do fixed income because one reading of fixed income needs some concept from derivatives. So the, pro, the flow of uh, uh, this thing and the retention is going to be needed in a particular subject. I put it towards the end, towards the exam. The retention where it is required at a lower level, I put towards the beginning of the preparation where you're not going to be losing uh, uh, the retention, uh, uh, losing on the content so much. So that is how I've thought about all these factors in making the order of study. So please stick to the order of study exactly the way it has given, been given to you. If you want to vary, that is up to you. If you understand the topic very well from some other place, from because uh, you have worked on that and you want to modify, that is up to you. Please don't come to me with that. I have thought a lot and created the order of study. Either you stick to it or if you want to do something else, please don't get back to me because it's very difficult to personalize the uh, uh, order of study for everybody. And I've put in so much of time and so much. I take at least a few hours to just make this. So I put, I actually put so much of thought, theory practical is alternated, retention wise, syllabus changes wise, everything is thought about. So you have to follow the order of study. Once you start following the order of study and live students, you guys don't have an option. 
So you have to follow with the way I'm doing. After you are done with maybe three or four chapters, even in the life class, I'll do that. After completing three, four chapters, I will cover how to study and how to practice video, where I will just talk about in details how to practice. Because say, for example, there are certain tricks you have to do in the exam. Like the example would be, uh, you know, to read the first MCQ and then start reading the uh, passage. So now I have to tell that right now so that you get into that kind of a habit while practicing the questions because you have to build that habit in order to be able to do the same thing in the exam paper. So how to study and how to practice, I'll be covering half an hour, 45 minute session or so on these two. That will be after four, five chapters or so. So that you are getting a hang of the syllabus, the way we are going about it. It won't be a problem in level two because you're anyways, you know, comfortable with that. I'll be covering how to study and how to practice. You need to watch this. I'll just talk about the practice part right away. Then you complete your entire syllabus in exactly the order given. So for the live students, you guys are anyways over here. You will uh, know exactly how we are going. Um, the order and everything you'll have and the video students also have the order of study and everything is in a folder 1, 2, let's say chapter number 55 is there, the last chapter. So folder 1, folder 2 is chapter 2 videos, folder 3 is chapter 3 video. Chapter 3 will be part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4, part 5. So all the videos are there. So you complete this first. Once you're done with this, then you will have to watch the how to revise and how to attempt your paper. Extremely important is how to attempt your paper video. That is once you're done with the syllabus, you go through the how to revise, I'll tell you exactly in which order and how to go about with your revision and how to attempt your paper. That has to be done and how to attempt is an extremely important one. You'll watch it so that you know you can apply the same tricks to the mock papers that you will give after this and also if needed, three days or four days before the exam, you can watch this again. It is going to be an exceptionally important one to do, the how to attempt part. After that, you are starting off with your revision. You have your revision lectures also. Uh, so the syllabus is going to be extensive. So it's possible that the live will have 50% revision lectures you can take home, 50% we'll have in live. And the video students will have all the revision videos shared with them. Um, then, so you can go through the revision lectures and you need to do your revision and you need to appear, your, appear for your mock test. Your mock tests are going to be, I would generally suggest that the mock papers given by the institute, you need to do those mock papers just before the exam, uh, just before the exam. Before the exam, 7 to 8 or 10 days, you are not going to do any solving any mock papers. 7 days before the exams or 8 days before the exam is strictly revision only. There is absolutely not a single question you are going to practice, not a single mock test you are going to give. Irrespective of your preparation, your mock test needs to be wrapped up at least 8 days before the exam day. So based on a lot of things I'm telling you all these things, please stick to that. So you will not be appearing for any mock, no practice will be done, no solving will be done in the last eight days before the exam day. So all those things will be guided over here. And even for the live students, I'll keep on telling you guys. And since you will be on an exam leave, I'll keep on putting your voice notes on in your WhatsApp. So every week you will be getting voice notes and all. Obviously your frequency of voice note will increase before the exam. So I'll keep on doing that. So even like say for example 9 to 12 you are giving the exam, 12 o'clock you will get a message from me, stop looking at your phone and go and study. So even to that level we will be doing, so you are not supposed to be looking at your phone and discussing the paper or thinking about uh, uh, how it went or evaluating, okay this question came in the first half, so this subject will come in the second half, you are not supposed to be doing all that. So to that level of details you will be given instructions. Please stick to following the instructions. Trust me on the on a lot of research, on a lot of experience, I'm talking to so many students have, have uh, I'm doing all these things. So please stick to what has been told. Trust me on this. Last eight days, no practice is going to be done. Before that, you have to give two mock papers. And two mock papers, this time what I'm going to do is, last year what I used to do was, I used to give one mock paper and three hours revision. So suppose students used to give a mock paper 9 to 12 and then 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock I used to have a revision. I used to plan it that way because I don't want you to spend time in commuting. This time what I'm going to do is, every single student has to mandatorily even the video students at home, you have to give one mock paper 9 to 12, you have to give second mock paper 2 to 5. Because I've seen people performing badly in the afternoon session because they feel exhausted and tired. So you cannot do that, that you cannot afford anymore. So your mock test has to be from 9 to 12 one mock test and 2 to 5 the second mock test. You have to do that, whether you're working or not working doesn't matter, you have to do that. So whatever feedback I'm getting that when I'm seeing these students give a mock test and then do a 3 hour revision class with me, I see them exhausted. So you will do the same thing in the exam day. So you have to practice that. You have to train yourself to do that. Because it is mentally exhausting. You are thinking continuously for 6 hours. You are not writing for 6 hours. You are just thinking for 6 hours. So it's mentally very draining and you understood. And level 2 will be even more. Half the number of questions, still the difficulty level is notches higher. And more amount of time you are going to take. 
So this is how you're going to be going about. So you watch the introduction class, you do a few chapters based on the order of study, how to study, how to practice you do, that videos are going to be provided to you, the classes are going to be done for the live students, you complete your syllabus and how to revise, how to attempt and you, then you go about it. For level 1 students who are there with me or not there with me irrespective, please make sure that you're going to watch the calculator video that is there on YouTube how to use the calculator because even then you're not using the memory functions you're not using the bond duration functions there are quite a few functions that you know that is there in the calculator still you are not using it my suggestion would be that you watch the calculator video in parts so let's say i watched the half an hour this this one and and write down a list of functions that you are not using like NPV, IRR, you don't have to know. Uh, time value of money, uh, PV, FV, you know exactly. Second data, second stat, you guys know very well. So the functions that you have not used very often, write down a list of those functions at the back of a book or something and start practicing, start using those functions. So your calculator needs to be thorough. Every single button has been covered. It's there on YouTube. It will also be there in the uh, videos folder that will be provided to you. So the calculator video has to be done somewhere in between over here. Since you guys are level 2, you can fit it anywhere, but try to do so a little early on. The duration and all also can be calculated on the calculator. You have to be exceptionally fast with calculator. Without even writing a single word, you should be able to open three, four brackets, at least three brackets, up to uh, at least three or four maximum, but three brackets you should be able to open in the calculator and close. You cannot see the bracket. So without writing anything on the paper, you should be so confident with your calculator that you can open and close three brackets. That is the level of speed, that is the level of efficiency with respect to the calculator that you need to get to. Uh, with respect to practice now, so what is the order of practice that you'll be having? I'll discuss more in details with respect to practice and all. I'll need at least a half an hour, 40 minutes or so to discuss. But your order of practice is going to be very simple. The questions behind the chapters in the Schweizer textbook, please don't count that as practice. That is like a dudba, that is like your, uh, by default you're doing it. So that is not counted as practice, but you're doing it. So don't even tell me that that is what I have practiced. When I ask you how much of practice you've done in the class, please don't tell me I've done the back questions of Schweizer book. That is not practice. What you need is your first priority is going to be the institute material. Bookshelf is the institute's textbooks. So the question and answers behind the institute textbooks, whether they are in the item set pattern or whether they are in the single MCQ pattern. Because even single MCQs like corporate finance and you know, there are quite a few topics I've seen. There are very good level of questions that were there. Your understanding needs to be very, very thorough. So there were very good, very good standard questions are there in the bookshelf. So even if it is an item set basis or if it is a non-item set question, every question behind the bookshelf you are supposed to be solving. The second priority comes is the mock book that I have provided to you. So my mock book you have to have to complete. The third priority will come in. So the Schweizer back questions are anyways there. I'm not counting that. Bookshelf is there. Then my mock book is there. The third comes in the Schweizer. Uh, the third comes in the online uh, questions of the institute. So when you go to the website on the institute, you have the online questions. Online institute websites questions. Then the next one becomes your Schweizer practice book 2. And then becomes your Schweizer practice book 1. And of course, I'm not even counting the mock papers that will be given one month before the exam in the month of June. So June 2019, when you give the exam, a month before that, the institute is going to be providing you two mock papers. Those two mock papers, you are supposed to be giving it 9 to 12 and 2 to 5. Without any questions, without any, uh, I will be nagging you. If you're not coming, I'll do a parents call if you want for, for the live students. Whatever it is, I don't care, but you have to give the mock paper 9 to 12 and 2 to 5. I will, I take the scores. I see the scores of the students. So once all you guys are supposed to be writing your scores, or your, you'll have your name lists over here. You have to put your scores. If your scores are bad, obviously I'll have to sit with you. And I, I'll, I'll also take the breakup of subject wise scores. So I'm not going to leave you that easily. So you have to give that mock paper 9 to 12, 2 to 5 analysis, where it went wrong, why it went wrong. I need the breakup also. If you've made 20 uh, questions wrong out of 120, so the breakup of 20 is needed. That out of which 5 I did not know the formula, 5 I made a silly mistake. Now 10 I did not understand the question. So the 10 we need to focus on. And you need to see how to rectify those mistakes. So all that analysis we'll have to do. And for the video students, please don't worry. You have to do it. Of course, you'll have to be a little more proactive on your own. But I'll keep on sending voice notes in the group as to tell you that what the feedback was for the live students, how they have fared, what mistakes they have made, where they are going wrong. So accordingly, you will be getting your guidance. So you don't worry about it. I'll be absolutely personally in touch with you guys through WhatsApp voice notes and everything. So that is going to be there. Now, obviously, there are so many other resources. Like say, for example, we also have got a page called Curious Questions Corner on Facebook, where I just try to put very different kind of questions, something which is not very regular on a Schweizer or a something like that. So if there is something, something very in, uh, different, I find out those are there. So if you want, you can solve that. But that is later. That is not a part of your practice. So don't worry. Now, this you have to do and this you have to do. 
for those who have a decent amount of time you try to do these two parallelly with the class so class study practice for those who think i have a little less time just concentrate on this and do this with your revision so you'll have to figure it out exactly how to go about it i don't think you need to bother so much about the practice book one for those who find it relatively more time consuming and irritating to practice online then you may skip this one but if you are comfortable practicing online say for example if you have time in office and you can just you know randomly go through per subject question answers some time in office so if you can cover this up in office very good part 2 i would suggest you to complete but these two are mandatory you have to do the mock book that will be provided from my behalf or uh, uh, from my side and the bookshelf back questions for this also in your performance track i'll talk about that in your tracker i'll be highlighting which are very very important so, so dark gray would be very important lighter gray would be less important white you may skip but i don't think you'll have anything skipping over here mock book though there is definitely nothing you can skip it is going to be subject wise so every subject you complete you solve that uh, subject from the mock book and the bookshelf you'll have to do it trust me focus on the institute resources it is way more important to crack the exam so you need to do the bookshelf you need to do the mock book you need to do the two mock papers before the exam that is mandatory other than that depending on the time we have in this order of priority we can do shwai is a practice book one you can leave because the standard of book 2 is better than book 1 So this is the order in which you will practice. There are so many, there are unlimited resources available online, and you cannot do everything. So understand that there are so many apps providing questions, this, that, everything is there. But you have to first you do this properly, then we'll talk about the rest. And you won't have time because after doing this much of studying, bookshelf, mock book, revision, you have to do very, very thoroughly. So you know, don't don't uh, uh, get into, don't get confused, don't do too many things because ultimately there are unlimited resources. Trust me. So you cannot do everything. So instead, be very focused on this is my target. Let me complete this. If you still want to do something extra, we'll think about it with revision because right now you don't need to bother. So those who are starting October, November, December, or January, start with these two together parallelly. For those who are going to be starting in February, March, uh, February, please start with only bookshelf practice parallelly with class study practice and mock book. You do with your revision. And for those who are starting even later, at least skim through the bookshelf questions. At least see how the questions are run. But I would still suggest uh, for those who are starting in let's say March, do my mock book because there will be less questions over here as compared to bookshelf. Bookshelf, your questions are chapter wise. Mock book, the question is subject wise. So you complete your subject, then you do the mock book practice. So for the ones who are starting in March, you're supposed to be doing that. But a certain amount of practice along with studying has to be done. So you attend or watch the class, you study yourself very nicely, and then you practice. how to study and all i'll talk about it once you're done with a few chapters i'll tell you exactly how to make notes and mistake sheet and formula sheet lot of things needs to be discussed exactly how you need to prepare i'll discuss it over there there is no mugging up you can do so that is absolute uh, absolutely out of the question don't study from multiple places we have a photographic memory you know you remember i've seen this on the left side of the page in the top one use color pens to write stuff on schweizer textbooks and all so uh, no uh, multiple places don't study the same thing you'll get confused because you'll not be able to strike in the exam whether you read this over here or you read this over here so you have to study from one place uh, practice i've talked about order of study will be provided your tracker uh, your performance tracker is going to be provided so in that basically what i've done is uh, you will get an excel sheet and also a hard copy so it's easier to maintain a hard copy there uh, uh, have you done the class have you done the studying part have you done practice from here there and all and priority wise and everything is filled up over here you need to just keep on putting done or keep on ticking over here what is done on the excel sheet if you put they will tell you exactly in which uh, uh, what you need to study next how many weeks do you have per chapter see the scheduling part is very simple you just can leave two or three weeks before the exam so you leave june aside so let's say till the month of may and for those who are starting a little early you take the month last two weeks also aside so what you do is you calculate the number of weeks you have leaving aside the last two three weeks for revision you just see the number of weeks you have and the number of chapters you have so that many chapters per week is what you need what is your target there is no other scheduling required so based on order of study you need to complete these many chapters per week so just get that straight and just start completing according to that So your schedule is very very simple. How many chapters per week is what you need to cover. So even if someone is starting in January, he's got January, February, March, April. So that's sixteen weeks and another two or three from May. So about nineteen weeks for fifty chapters. So fifty divided by nineteen is going to be about approximately two and a half or three readings per per week. So you'll have to do that. Uh, you cannot mug up anything at all. 
so don't even attempt doing that you have to be extremely thorough you cannot miss out on anything uh, there is no selective studying absolutely don't even think about it there is ample time even if you start right now or even if you start in january or february but again i'm telling you the earlier you start there is more time that you can give to the same content so you you know you can absorb the content better you can do more analysis you can think more you'll be able to practice more so it's better to start early and again i'm telling you it's percentile uh, calculate your own hours as i told you you see how many hours you need how many hours of studying you need the classes are going to be somewhere approximately 150 hours of content so so accordingly you'll have to understand so if i'm left with like let's again 20 weeks so 150 hours 20 weeks means i need seven and a half hours classes covered per week so let me do eight eight nine hours of classes and studying and practice of eight nine hours worth of content so that is how you schedule so number of weeks number of hours number of hours per week that many classes with study and practice or that many chapters I need to cover per week. So that is how you schedule your this thing. Uh, start in October, November. Uh, that is sufficient. That is fine. Absolutely. Uh, February, March also because obviously the level 1 students will start in uh, after Jan end. Uh, level 1, I have already told you. The live students attend from December exactly the next day of their exam. My students have no problem. The, even the other students can attend by showing their admit card till the results are out. From the result day, you have to enroll and continue. For the video students, as I told you, the maximum we can do is, we can, in case you do not clear the exam, we can defer your exam to the, we can defer your validity to another year without absolutely any charges. That is what we can do. Um, importance level, I'll give you an importance level of all the chapters, but that is just for your guidance that, you know, this chapter is more important or this chapter is relatively less important, but there is absolutely zero uh, uh, this nonsense to be done, no selective studying to be done. Mocks at the end, I've told you, you cannot practice everything I've told you. Uh, you will get your mind maps also. So uh, the, the, the quick uh, version of that, you'll get that. Um, Schweizer notes, multiple places, mock book. Yes, more or less I've covered everything. If you have any questions with respect to preparation or practice, let me know. Is there any question with respect to preparation or practice? Anything about that? Nothing? Sure. So this question is whether in one item set we'll be having questions from only one subject. Normally, yes. But then when you're looking at certain subject which might have a very, very low weightage, it is also possible that you might get, let's say, four questions on one subject and two questions on another subject in the same item set. But too much of integration of subjects does not happen. So you'll not find like two subjects have been absolutely amalgamated together and then a question has been given on that. Generally, it does not happen like that. 99.9% .9 have not seen any of the questions like that. But it's possible that four questions on one subject and then two questions on another subject. But then it will be a clear demarcation. You'll not have a problem as in the subjects are integrated. You won't have that issue. See if there's any other question, tell me.